A severe weather and fire weather outbreak is expected here today for central to northern portions of the United States. Hurricane force winds across the board as possible, as well as tornadoes and excessive wildfires. Stay tuned to the video for all the latest information on that. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Nate. I also go by Hockey Boy and Nate. We have a lot of stuff to talk about here in this video, so please be sure to subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family and on social media, and by liking the video, you actually help me get this video out to more and more people on YouTube's algorithm. That would be greatly appreciated. Let's just get straight into the video here with the satellite imagery that we do in every single video. You can see that we have our low pressure system that's moving on through into portions of Utah and Colorado, creating some snow squall warnings for portions of Colorado heading towards the Denver area. So if you guys live across the Rocky Mountains, you guys could potentially be getting some significant visibility lowering from these snow squalls. So watch out for that. But upstream, you can see this massive jet stream that's starting to really skyrocket off from the south and west to the north and east. And this is what's the setup here for today. You can already see our outlook here for the day one severe weather day. We have our one out of five on the severe weather scale indicated in the dark green, our two out of five in yellow, our three out of five in orange, and then our four out of five in yellow in red. And the Storm Prediction Center really has gained a lot of confidence here with the strong damaging winds because if we take a look at the damaging wind aspect here, you can see there's a massive area of 45% chance. So we have a 5% indicated in brown, a 15 in yellow, a 30 in red, and then a 45 in pink. So whatever probability you have, that is your chance of seeing 58 mile per hour wind gusts or higher within a 25 mile radius. And we can zoom in here to see that this does include areas near Omaha, near Des Moines, near Mason City and Rochester, Minnesota, as well as La Crosse in Wisconsin. So watch out for that as this does seem to be the main risk for severe weather. But then there is also this hatched risk here. This is a significant risk for strong damaging winds over hurricane force. And you can see this extends from near Omaha into Lincoln, all the way just north of Kansas City and Topeka into places like Cedar Rapids, as well as Mankato and Minneapolis, as well as Euclid and Wausau. So if you live in this general area, you guys definitely need to watch out for some very strong damaging winds and excellent of hurricane force. Now we do have a tornado risk here today. Of course, the 2% is indicated in green, 5% in brown, and then a 10% in yellow. So if you guys live within these areas, that is your probability of seeing a tornado within a 25 mile radius. So you can see that does include places like Omaha, Des Moines, Carroll, all the way up into Mason City, Mankato, and Rochester, as well as La Crosse. Just barely excluding Sioux City, but do not be surprised if you guys could get some stuff over there as well as into Worthington. So watch out if you live within that general area as well. And we also have our significant severe risk here for tornadoes as well. So if you guys live within this general vicinity right here, you guys have a 10% chance or greater of seeing a significant tornado, which is EF2 or higher within a 25 mile radius. So watch out for that. But... I don't think that the tornadoes will be the main risk here today. I do think the strong damaging winds is going to take priority over all the other risks. Seems how widespread the actual thunderstorms are expected to be. And on the other hand, let's take a look at our fire weather outlook here for today, December 15th. You can see that areas in the orange is indicated in an elevated risk. Red is a critical and then the pink with the red dotted lines is extremely critical. And so it goes from a scale of one to three in this instance. And we have a three here over portions of the western Oklahoma panhandle into southwestern and central portions of Kansas. And in my opinion, this could potentially be a very significant risk for fire weather, especially with low dew points, low relative humidity and potential hurricane force wind gusts over there in Kansas as well. And we're gonna take a look at that over in the weather models. So here we are with the weather models. We're gonna be using the NAM 3 kilometer for the most part within this model today, although the HRRR says very similar things except for the severe weather event, where they actually think it's gonna be more of a strong damaging wind event instead of the tornado threat. But we're gonna be using the NAM 3 kilometer just as the worst case scenario model for today. Of course, you wanna take a look at the timings. They are above me in Eastern Daylight Time. So if you're in Central, you're gonna to have to subtract one hour from this. And let's go ahead and play this out just to see what happens here. You can see a lot of that snow into Colorado and the general Rockies area, but then as this really starts to form here by 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, 
this really starts to go ahead and form a kind of consolidated line into portions of eastern Nebraska, which is where Lincoln in that Omaha general vicinity is around the Missouri River. And as we continue to push this across into Iowa, you can see it starts to impact places like Sioux City, and it'll start to approach the areas of Des Moines as well, heading off in towards the border of Iowa and Minnesota, eventually towards the general vicinity of Mankato and Rochester. So if you guys live within that general area, you guys might be getting some thunderstorms that are overnight or into the evening hours here when it's completely dark. You can see the timing above me. It's around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, and that's really not the ideal situation for you all. So definitely something to keep in mind if you guys live within this general vicinity, that there could be some strong showers and thunderstorms and upwards of hurricane force wind gusts, as well as the potential for tornadoes within some of these thunderstorms as well. So watch out for that. So now let's take a look at the 500 millibar wind shear, which is about six kilometers above ground level. So it's still pretty high. It's the upper level winds here. And you can see we have this massive dip in the jet stream with our low pressure system located over Colorado, as we mentioned with our satellite imagery earlier on in the video. And that giant dip in the jet stream, our trough right there, is going to continue to eject further into central portions of the United States, as well as into the upper Midwest. And look at this. As soon as it gets up towards places like Iowa and Minnesota, the wind shear starts to really amplify with wind shear values in upwards of 130 knots, which is around 145 to 150 miles per hour. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at our 850 millibar low level jet, which is about one kilometer above ground level. You can see the current flow is from south to north, so we have a lot of moisture that's coming from the Gulf of Mexico that is now starting to rise towards our severe weather risk, so watch out for that. And as we play this along here, you can see that the wind shear is really going to start to amplify, especially as it starts to move over into Kansas. And that's the reason why there could be a big fire risk here there. With low relative humidity values, low dew points, as well as some very significant damaging winds that are not thunderstorm associated, this could potentially lead to wildfire starting as well as spreading very rapidly, especially with wind gusts and upwards of hurricane force. Now, as this plays out towards Iowa, you can see the wind shear continues to rapidly intensify further and further. And you can see wind shear values here on this level is up to 95 knots, which is about 105 miles per hour. And this low level jet is going to be the leading factor here for our strong damaging winds, as well as tornadoes here, especially into portions of North northern Iowa, and southern Minnesota. And you can see here on our dew points already, the low-level jet has really carried our moisture further and further north. It's not exactly up towards the risk completely quite yet, but we still have a half a day to go, and that will eventually move up north. And you'll see here as I play this about that the moisture does continue to seep up further and further north. But what also seeps in is a lot of this very cool dry air. We have dew points in our single digits within this general area here in western Kansas as well as in the western panhandle of Oklahoma. And that's the reason why there is a huge fire risk there for Kansas because you have some very dry dew points with some significant damaging winds. And this could potentially be a problem. This, according to the NAM 3 kilometer model, is the highest wind gust that this general vicinity of Kansas could potentially get. And you can see that the maximum there on the side is an upwards of 80 miles per hour. But I would not be surprised if it would be a little bit more balanced out across 75 miles per hour, especially across southwestern portions of Kansas into the western panhandle of Oklahoma. So watch out for that. But going back to the dew points here, you can see that this massive dry line here continues to seep on forward and forward. And you can see the dew points here in Iowa start to get up to the 60s in some spots. And if you've been on my channel for quite some time, you guys know that once you start to get up into the 60s, that's when severe weather could potentially be possible throughout some areas with certain environments. So now we're going to take a look at the timings for this event here from Nebraska into Iowa and into Minnesota. So the timing in this instance, so the timing in this instance now is at the top left hand part of your screen and it's already converted to central standard time. So lucky you guys. So as this plays out here from the morning into the afternoon hours, you can see the low pressure system now start to move into portions of North Platte. 
as well as into Kearney and Grand Island, and some long lines of showers and thunderstorms start to form, especially into Lincoln and into Omaha. We'll backtrack it here just a little bit. And the storms apparently start to move on through at around 4 to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, with them approaching Omaha and Sioux City at around 6, well, 5 to 6, I should say. And then you could potentially have some residual snow showers that could seep in behind this with all the cool air that's starting to seep in with a lot of that residual moisture. Moving off towards Iowa here, you can see the line of showers and thunderstorms don't really come into view until around 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, where they approach Omaha, Nebraska. And then they'll start to move on through into Denison, maybe even into Maryville, Missouri. And that'll continue to further go along towards Worthington, Minnesota, as well as into Fort Dodge and Des Moines, probably at around 7 p.m. Central Standard Time before they further move along towards Mason City, Marshalltown, as well as into the Waterloo General Area. And maybe even Cedar Rapids and Iowa City also get into the action there as this continues to move further and further on towards the east. But the one thing you'll notice here is that as this does move off to the east, the definition of these showers and thunderstorms start to lose a bit of its integrity. So definitely something to make a note of if you're on the eastern portion of the risk that I showed you with the day one convective outlook. And last but not least, we have a bit of Minnesota and Wisconsin to talk about here. So as this continues to play out, you'll see how your showers and thunderstorms really start to kind of form here from Mankato all the way into Rochester at around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Some residual sleet and freezing rain is possible if you're north of Brookings in South Dakota and south of Fargo. And that'll continue to be the case as this continues to move about into the overnight hours with some more and more showers and thunderstorms that are expected to move on through past the Mississippi River and into Wisconsin towards Eau Claire and La Crosse. So watch out for that as this could potentially be some strong damaging winds and the potential for tornadoes in and around the line of thunderstorms. And just to watch the storm play out here, we'll watch this as this continues to eject further north and east. You can see more snow is expected to come in and fill some of the areas that just got rain. So areas north of St. Cloud into Duluth, as well as into Fort Francis, they could potentially get some residual snow, but it's not expected to be a whole lot of snow. So something to consider with that as well. So the one question that I'm sure most of you have on their minds is, will I be live streaming? And the answer is yes. But the real question is for how long, because I might have some obligations to do a little bit later on tonight. So I'll see if I can work around that. But otherwise, please stay tuned to the channel so that you guys may stay updated with when I will be live streaming because I definitely will be live streaming the beginning of the event. But stuff towards the end might be a little bit more of a difficulty if I can't work around some of the IRL issues that I have. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, especially if you want to share this information with more and more people on YouTube. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications share this with friends and family and on social media also follow me on social media link will be in the description down below i also have a discord server if you want to join that please be sure to join my discord server we have a lot of fun we talk about weather and i will see you guys later on today so peace out everyone